I built an AI video generator with ChatGPT. These videos can be used for YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels or Stories, even TikTok. And I did it all in four days of coding. Over those four days, it took me roughly 25 to 30 hours. But in this video, I'm gonna give you six tips that I learned so that you can save way more time than I spend coding this. Because if I learned these six tips early on, I would have got this done in two days and not four. Let me show you the video quick. This is what it created. The keto diet has gained popularity because it changes the body's usual way of burning energy. Instead of using carbs, the diet encourages ketosis, a state where fat becomes the primary fuel source. Now, we still have some work to do on this. It's just a beta, but I think this is a great start. If you want to try it out for yourself and create these AI-generated videos for your social media accounts, I'll leave a link to youraiagent.com in the description below. The agent you're looking for is called Reels and Stories, and you can use it to turn any concept or script topic into a scroll-stopping short-form video. But let's get to the tips. Tip number one, find and use the best ChatGPT model for your project. I've done a ton of testing here for all the different models, and the best one I found is O3 with search enabled. Now, I'm currently on the pro plan of ChatGPT, so I don't know if free users get this model. If you're on the plus plan, I also don't know how many uses of this O3 model you get, but for the pro plan, you get an unlimited usage of O3. So I was able to use this at least 150 to 200 times during my project, and it worked beautifully. Let me quickly show you how this model works with search enabled, so you have an idea of what we're working with. Okay, for example, I prompted it. This is one of the problems I had during my project. So the subtitles in my Python script were not lining up correctly with the spoken audio. There was sometimes a delay, sometimes they were showing up too fast, and then I pasted my entire script, which at this time was around 500 lines, and then I had search enabled, I sent it in, and you'll see it's thinking. The O3 model is gonna look through your request, try to summarize it for the model, then it's gonna search the web, look at how many sources, then it's gonna summarize those results, and then it's gonna reason with itself to figure out if that could be the issue. It's gonna search the web one more time, and you can see the key phrase it's using to search the web. It's still thinking, I can expand this, and you can see all of the reasoning steps. The O3 model is great at reasoning and using a lot of sources. Look at it, searching the web some more, even more down here. Look at all these sources. And after one minute and 27 seconds of thinking, it was able to come up with this solution. The O3 model is very good at coding, and you add in the feature of searching the web for the most up-to-date information. And I found that most of the time, it would get the solution right. I would update my code, I would update the blocks that it tells me to update, I would test it locally, and it would oftentimes work. Tip number two, build only one feature at a time. I know it's super tempting to just throw everything at the model all at once and have it spit out entire code, but that often doesn't work. There's just too many things going on. It'd be like me saying, I want to build a Python script where, one, it takes a video and turns it into a short. It grabs stock images and then combines it with AI-generated images. Number three, then it automatically posts to Instagram. Then it takes that video and posts it to TikTok. It crafts a title from that script to use on different platforms. Then it solves the world's energy crisis. Number seven, it takes a screenshot of frame seven in the video and posts it to LinkedIn. This is just way too much for the model. It's gonna get confused. The output is not going to work. So what I found is that for each feature or each bug, I created a brand new chat to keep everything clean. The less data used for the model, the better. So in my subtitles error example, once I tested the model's response, in my code and it worked, I would create a new version of my code. You can save this wherever you want. I use Google Drive. I would paste it into a doc because I tested it and I know the fix works. Then I would create a brand new chat and move on to the next feature request. Tip number three, tell it to go over your code after you've made the changes to ensure it's correct. This is something I figured out later on in this project. After I've gone through and made the necessary changes in my script, so I pasted that in, on the next call, I would copy everything and write something like, please confirm that I've made all of the proposed changes to my script correctly. 
then I would paste my entire script into ChatGPT. For this one, you usually don't have to toggle on search the web because you already searched the web in the previous response. So it already has the answer. But with doing that, I often found that the model looks over its own code and realizes that it made mistakes. So I would do this two or three times per change. And I found this to be much faster than making the change, running the code, seeing an error message because the code isn't correct, and then copying that error message and sending it back to ChatGPT. Tip number four, tell ChatGPT to just make the necessary changes and nothing else. This can be another sneaky issue if you're not careful coding with ChatGPT. So I like to say when I already have a full script working, show me exactly what to do with my script, making only the necessary changes and nothing else. Because sometimes if you're not careful, ChatGPT will output your entire script again from start to finish. And in that output, it hasn't copied your entire script to begin with. So you'll get an output with changes in it that you didn't authorize. So old bugs that you already fixed will pop up again. So when I tell it to just make the necessary changes, it spits out little code blocks like this and little steps like this where you can quickly copy and paste into your script to see if it works, leaving all of your other files and code untouched. This way you know if your previous script worked and this newest change doesn't, it's something with ChatGPT's proposed change that is causing the break. One of the most frustrating issues I kept running into with the script was that ChatGPT kept using information where this Python library used set position, but the newest updated version is actually with position. So it would spit out new code changes with the old library. Even though I already put in with, it would send out set position, and I knew I didn't even have to try the code to see it wouldn't work. I would get similar errors and it would go around in circles. So when you tell it to just make one change at a time and nothing else, it leaves your previous coding blocks intact. Tip number five, clean your code frequently and ask it to speed up performance. In your output, ChatGPT is constantly making annotations. These are texts in your code that doesn't run. Like right here, YouTube Short Maker Movie Pie 2.1.x, Frame Perfect Captions via 11 Labs with Timestamps. This is just a title for the script, and if I remove it, it's going to do nothing. It also outputs lots of comments, especially every time you make a change. Right here, pound sign, caption, chunk size. That is a comment. I can delete it, and it won't affect my script. And why I like to clean up this text from the script is because if you're pasting your full code every single time into ChatGPT, those comments, those annotations, that's extra data that the model has to look through in order to come up with its response. More data means a higher possibility of getting it wrong and a higher possibility of making mistakes. So the cleaner the code, the better. You're also gonna be constantly testing the changes, either locally or somewhere like here, the Google Cloud Shell Editor. And originally this code took 10 to 15 minutes to create a video. So every time I made a change with ChatGPT, then I would run the code from the terminal. I would have to wait 10 to 15 minutes to see the result. Eventually, I just asked it, can you increase performance of the script? It currently takes 10 to 15 minutes to produce a video. How much further can we drop that down? And after sending that in, ChatGPT noticed that it was running Python for every frame in the video. So that's why it was taking so long to generate. It gave me a few ideas to speed up that process. And it found those by searching the web and finding that other users had the same problem. And I was able to cut down video generation time to under five minutes. And you got to think for every new feature, for every bug fix, I was saving 10 minutes of testing time. So that increased my productivity immensely. And last but not least, tip number six. I hope you don't think this is a cop out. Just don't get discouraged. Take short breaks. Coding with ChatGPT can be incredibly frustrating. Look how long this one feature took to build. Look, at I'm slowly scrolling up here. You know, a lot of times I had to paste my entire code just to make sure it was correct. But you can sometimes get caught in loops where nothing you seem to ask it or nothing you seem to do works. Just don't get discouraged. You can do anything with ChatGPT. I'm a bubble.io developer. 
and I was able to build an entire Python script because I had access to ChatGPT 03 and their search feature. I would never be able to do this ever. And I know it was incredibly frustrating over these four days, but I got out a working beta and I learned so much in the process and I'll be able to recreate this with other features in the future. I found that after banging my head against the wall over and over and over again, sometimes it was good to just take a short break, do something else, get your mind off the project, even though you really want to get it done. And in that break time, I was able to think of new strategies, new solutions, but more importantly, new ways to prompt ChatGPT to get the output that I want. So I want everyone to remember that this is an amazing time in this world that you can accomplish anything that you want. The sky is the limit, especially when it comes to coding. If you have any idea, you can get ChatGPT to make it for you. So think positively and you can get it done yourself as well. Again, if you want to try the new AI video generator for yourself, right now it's only available within youraiagent.com. I'm going to leave a link to this app that I built in the description below. But I'm also thinking of opening up this as an API for all of your businesses to use as well. If this is something that you'd be interested in. Please write it in the comments below and I'll add you to the update list when this is available for your own projects. If you have your own idea for an AI agent and want to turn it into a profitable web app, check out my online course, How to Build a Custom AI App. In this course, I teach you how to build with Bubble so you'll have both a front end and a back end for your projects. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal YouTube watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there. Peace.